I saw the algae and it was really kind of a neon green. I was surprised at how neon it looked. It is very distinct uh, once you see an algae bloom and you know you don't want to touch it. You better not touch it. That's an HAB, a harmful algal bloom. It could make you sick and kill your dog if you are both unlucky enough to fall in. Researchers at Ohio's Heidelberg University have been studying water quality for four decades. The team is gathering water samples on streams that feed into the Maumee River, which flows into Lake Erie. Automatic samplers are set up to take samples three times a day, every eight hours for an entire week. And inside that station is a refrigerated sampler. And every Monday we come out here and, and exchange the bases. In the 1960s, pollution and algal blooms almost killed Lake Erie. After that, phosphates were banned in laundry detergent. Phosphorus was reduced and things got better. But in recent years, algal blooms have been making a comeback. And Heidelberg researchers think they've found out why. It's called dissolved phosphorus. It's said dissolved phosphorus is like a power bar for the toxic algae. If you were to ask five years ago, dissolved phosphorus, everybody would scratch their head and go, what's that? And they now feel that that's really the component, one of the main components in contributing to the algal blooms. We like to think that we know everything that's going on out here, but sometimes it takes a little bit longer term of sampling and database and data analysis to really start to see trends. Though there are several sources of dissolved phosphorus in Lake Erie, scientists believe most of the problem comes from farm fertilizer. The other ones all contribute, but the one that contributes the most or puts in the largest portion of the load is uh, agricultural runoff. And so we're trying to get farmers to not apply more than they need and modify the way that they apply the fertilizer. And we think that pretty much those two things together will uh, we'll solve the problem. This year, the Ohio Farm Bureau began promoting ways to better apply fertilizer using the right amount at the right time. This farm has been in the family since 1890. The Myers farm is near Toledo, less than a mile from Lake Erie. My great-grandfather is the one that first started this. My son's the fifth generation. Bill Myers says he's been applying fertilizer the way the Farm Bureau recommends for years. It's just common sense, really. It bothers him that farmers are so often blamed for the algal blooms. The people that will listen to these interviews or read the articles in the paper, the point they don't understand is there isn't some great big pile of phosphorus someplace that the government gives us for free that they say, hey, use all you want. It's expensive. It costs hundreds of dollars an acre to purchase and apply. Best agricultural practices that reduce harmful runoff can be expensive. That's why programs like this one that help farmers grow cover crops in the fall are so important. Brett Margraff has been using cover crops for years. Still, this is not a common sight in Northwest Ohio, at least not yet. The radishes aren't for eating. Kind of small. They're for holding soil, water, and nutrients in place over the winter so they don't get in the lake. In theory, in the upcoming years, we should see a reduction in what we use for nutrients to, to grow the same quantity of crop. Next spring, corn and soybeans will be grown here. Margraff sees it as a small step forward to improve the health of Lake Erie and maybe help his bottom line. And it works for conservationists who are looking at the bigger picture in western Lake Erie. The complexity of the system, the fact that it is a whole system, requires coordination and cooperation. You know, there's a lot to do at the farm level, but at the end of the day, the impact on the sustainability of the system comes from a large number of farmers and a large number of constituencies working together to achieve sustainability.